Pastor John here welcoming you to our broadcast. Uh, I've been on a short break getting ready for my next series, which will be in Ecclesiastes. Uh, and one of our elders is delivering their very first sermon at Warrington Bible Fellowship today. It's Bill Schwetke. Uh, let's listen to him as he uh, looks deep into Psalm 145 and unlocks some of the valuable lessons in there. This morning's reading from the Holy Scriptures is Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. This is the English Standard Version. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God. Thank you. Be seated. We are worshiping this first Sunday after Thanksgiving. Thank you for tuning in and for sitting in this morning. Uh, The announcements this morning. Operation Christmas Child, we processed 549 boxes through the campus this year. And our 10 drop-off area here in western Prince William and Fauquier processed 17,100 boxes. Last year, Operation Christmas Child produced just over 545,000 boxes for worldwide distribution. Right now, they're on track to increase that by about another 50,000 boxes. And each one of those boxes, of course, is a gospel opportunity, not just for the child, but for the family of that child. New members class started today with Pastor John. And if you're interested in the new members class, it's in the townhouse. It's upstairs in room five. We don't go upstairs much anymore because of the seminary being up there, but it is upstairs in room five if you have any questions. Today is a potluck. This is a repurposing and a recycling of your holiday uh, feast, perhaps, this morning. (laughs) Because you know it's like chili. Dressing tastes better when it sits for a while, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, man. Of course, you let it sit too long, and then it becomes an adhesive. But that's something else we'll talk about later. My friends, uh, today through the Christmas Eve, we're going to put the pastor's box out. Would you like to turn around and see the pastor's box? Right there it is. That gift box is for you and I uh, to express our love and affection for Kelly and for John this year. So you can put anything in that box you want to, really. Except for Uh, Kitty. Yes, except for that. But it will be back there until Christmas Eve. So please pray uh, about something that you would like to give to Kelly or John to show them our love and affection. Thank you for that consideration. There's a women's ministry 9 a.m. Uh, meeting on the 2nd of, of December and then followed by a 10 a.m. Planning committee, planning committee meeting. And then next Sunday, a week from today, which is the 3rd of December, we're going to have a church business meeting right after the service. And what will we be doing? Voting. We will be voting. That is correct. We'll be voting on our budget and our bylaws for 2000. And 24. And then on the 8th of December, love to be me as a Christmas party. Yahoo! And all of those are contained in more full detail in the Monday, the Monday minutes and the Friday forecast. Thank you so very much. Is there anything else to be brought before the body of Christ here at Warrington Bible Fellowship this morning? Anything? Well, then there's one more thing. Brother Bill will be speaking to us today. And just as a little parenthetic, next week we're going back to Genesis chapter 4 if you'd like to read that. But thank you, Bill, for committing this morning to speaking with us. And now we'll continue worshiping with... Psalm. Oh, yeah, we love it. All right, Psalm must be the, the theme this morning. I'm going to read to you um, from Psalm 9, what encouraged me this morning, verses 1 and 2. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds... I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Would you please stand and let's sing praise to his name.
to need some help from you since I'm the only vocalist up in front. You guys know this song. And when we get to the bridge where I sing, you will reign forever. I want the whole church to ring out. Let your glory fill the earth. Here in the sanctuary and online, declare that.
amen to his name. As we think about the Christmas season that is upon us, I just think, come, Lord Jesus, come. And I love this song as an introduction to the Christmas season. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Amen and amen. You may be seated. The not yet but now of our God and King returning, who now dwells in us, isn't that an amazing and mysterious thing? That the author and creator of time and space and matter would have us as his own and would dwell in us and promise not only is he with us, but he will return. Mystery of mysteries but joy of joys. And to know that that very same supreme being who is triune Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three co-equal, co-eternal persons, one mighty God, would engage with us in the work that he is doing, this, his planet, which is being ruined by his enemy and ours, 
to know that he will not allow his people to be diminished and or to be eliminated anywhere. That his promises are as solid and they are as regular as the seasons, he says in Scripture. With that in mind, brothers and sisters, we again memorialize the gift and the privilege of being his people and called to give and to invest in his kingdom in a way that promotes him and glorifies him among the peoples everywhere all the time. That means that you and I are being, being driven by the Holy Spirit. We are being exercised by the Holy Spirit. We are being conditioned by the Holy Spirit to do those things that God has always had in mind for us to do today and yesterday and tomorrow, the King of all time. So you can contribute and invest in God's kingdom through this congregation, Warrington Bible Fellowship, by dropping your contribution into the box, not the pastor's box. It's a different box. Or by sending it in on a secure give online or by sending it by mail here at 46 Winchester, Old Town, Warrington, Virginia. Let's pray, shall we? Mighty God, if we might just have a glimpse and just a tiny bit of a sense today of your might and your beauty and your wonder and your strength and your brilliance and your genius, if we might just for a moment get a tiny sliver of all you are, wouldn't it just bring us to our knees and our faces? Thank you for the mercy and the privilege of being called to be your own. Thank you for the privilege of being called to, to give to the kingdom that you have established forever and ever. Bless these that, that which we bring to you and multiply it, that you might be made famous before all nations and all people everywhere. Thank you for this privilege. Bless these contributions and these ties and gifts to your name. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray these saying together, amen. Well, we do celebrate the first week of Advent today. How about that already? We're celebrating that purpose in history. Let me read you a little bit about Advent before we light our first candle this morning. Advent observes the arrival of our Savior Jesus Christ. The wreath forms a circle that represents the unending love of God. It's made of evergreens to remind us of the life growth, and hope that we have in Christ. And this morning, Paul and Dorothy, would you come up and read that which is concerning the first candle and lighting that first candle. And at the completion of the Advent lighting, we'll have Brother Bill come and speak to us. We light the candles to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. The first purple candle symbolizes hope. It is called the prophecy candle. The prophets of the Old Testament, especially Isaiah, waited in hope for the Messiah's arrival. The purple color symbolizes royalty, repentance, and fasting. Thank you, Dorothy and Paul. Well, I want to talk to you about blessings, and I'm reminded immediately about the blessing that we've received this morning from our worship team. Your choice of songs was perfect for what uh, I would like to speak about and performed wonderfully. Thank you. I hope each of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. It's the season for Christians to remember our blessings and give thanks. Today, I hope to remind you of some of those blessings that every Christian shares and bring a little more joy into your life. But I know that there's someone sitting here with us or with us online who's suffering from pain, 
or burdens and has found it difficult to be thankful. I don't wish to make light of your difficulties, but I do hope to share with you thoughts that I have found useful in dark times. I just had a very happy Thanksgiving, but many years ago, I had a very dark Thanksgiving. Just before Thanksgiving, I was packing, getting ready to leave uh, for a four-year assignment in a distant land where, at least at that point, I knew no friends, and my correspondence with my family was going to be by written letters, but also as eagerly anticipating returning in six months when my fiancé would graduate from college to be married and to take her back to that country to share the adventure. And then her letter came, and my world came crashing down, and I realized that a broken heart is physically painful. I was a Christian, but I wasn't reading the Bible. I didn't truly understand the gospel. I did not have the teaching that I've had here. So I suffered miserably because I didn't know the things that you know. When it's impossible to feel blessed, God is blessing us. Another example, think of a dark time to the Hebrews. 2,500 years ago, they were looking at a world where the lost tribes had been lost already for 100 years. And the people of Judea had been sent to exile in Babylon and Jerusalem was in ruins. The Jews poured out their sorrows in the book of Lamentations. But here we also find a jewel. Chapter 3, starting with verse 21. In the midst of this sorrow, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So in this dark hour for them, we're given an example of Jews who praise God with words that we would later turn into a song of praise and thanks. If the Jews can have this trust in God at a time like that, why shouldn't we have the same trust or even more because We know our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Let's consult our ever-faithful guide and see what King David, in his old age, has to say about being blessed and being thankful. David does this in his last psalm, Psalm 145. And as we read this, realize David anticipates Christ but he doesn't have the knowledge that you and I have in the gospel, in the New Testament. But David does know the grace and mercy of God. And in this psalm, he reminds himself and us of just how great and glorious God is and how wondrous his works are for us. And then he shows us the way in singing praise and giving thanks to God. Let me read Psalm 145, and I've added a couple additional verses as an intro and tacked one on to the end uh, for a conclusion. Uh, It's also on the front of your handout. Starting with Psalm 84, verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house ever singing your praise, Salah. Blessed are the people to whom such blessings fall. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name 
forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all of his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, and all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. So my mission is, with the help of God and his son, King David, to give you thoughts of thanksgiving by offering to you thoughts on God's nature, God's works, and how we worship him. If we understand God's nature and how he acts in our behalf, are we not compelled to give thanks, no matter how bright or dark our current situation? What follows is David's explanations, broken out under his main thoughts, so that we might meditate on each of the three main thoughts individually, starting with God's nature. In verse 3, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Too great for us to comprehend, unsearchable. Imagine the Hubble deep field photo. In 1995, the Hubble Space Telescope was pointed at what was believed to be an empty patch of the sky near the handle of the Big Dipper and left to stare there for 100 hours at an area one-thirtieth the size of a full moon or just 0.0008% of the night sky. That now famous photo shows 3,000 galaxies, not 3,000 stars, but galaxies, each with a few billion stars in a part of the sky that we thought previously was empty. God's universe that he created for us 
is unimaginably large. And yet, as Luke tells us, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows you and cares about you. How can he do this? Create this universe and know the hairs on your head. How unsearchably great is he. With God on your side, and he is, what should you fear? And how grateful are you that he is here with you? Not only is God great, but he is good. Verses 7 and 9. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness. The Lord is good to all. He is good. He defines the very term. What we know is good is to be closer to behaving like God. His good is the best example of what is good. And the Lord is good to all, including you, even when you're not good. Does that not fill you with gratitude? God made everything, and he's good to everything. Even when we reject him. The Hebrews rejected him time after time. And time after time, he was good to them. God chose the Hebrews. God has chosen you. So he will repay your sin with goodness. And David is the example in Psalm 51. David confronts his sin with Bathsheba and Uzziah and shows us the way by repenting and worshiping God, who is and remains good to David and us. And God in his goodness bestows gifts upon us that we do not deserve. Verse 8, the Lord is gracious. When we truly mer- when have we truly merited gifts that God's given us? Yet he continues to bestow such gifts. David did not yet know Christ, but we know the greatest gift of all time has been bestowed upon us who fall so short of meriting that gift. No matter what our current earthly condition, does not your heart sing to know the gift of the Messiah was given to us, sinners? Let God's grace Overcome your current concerns. And an even better gift is mercy when he does not give us what we deserve. When but Christ bears our sin. Verse 8 and 9. And merciful, slow to anger, and his mercy is over all that he has made. By God's mercy and his slowness to anger, we are spared the punishments we deserve. Anybody here remember being spanked? I do. What a joy it is to know that you deserve a spanking and you are mercifully spared. God grants his mercy to all that he has made. He does this all the time. It's mercy. In verse 13, and kind in all his works. Do we all not enjoy a little expression of kindness? Kindness to others is something we've learned from God as he made us in his image. Do you not feel blessed when you show a kindness, when you in miniature imitate our Lord? God is love, verse 8, and abounding in steadfast love. Abounding in love, not just any love, but steadfast love, unwavering love, and not just a little love, but he's abounding in it. And this love is beyond understanding, much stronger and awesome compared to what we, his creatures, are capable of. And he doesn't love you. Because you're lovable, though you are because he created you. He loves you because that is his nature. In verse 13, the Lord is faithful. 
in all his words. You may depend on what God has said. He is faithful. Think about that. The most powerful being in the universe, its creator, is faithful to you. Again, our faithfulness is something that we have learned from him. Verses 7 and 17. And shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. His righteousness through Christ is imputed to us. His righteousness is ours, an unsearchable gift for which we should be thankful. Notice how in so many ways God imparts his wonderful nature to us. And we should bless him by acknowledging our thankfulness. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. God's kingdom, our home, is everlasting and endures. It's not going away. He and his kingdom will always be there. This veil of tears will not last, but our home in him endures. So it's God's nature to be great, good, gracious, merciful, kind, abundant in love, faithful, righteous, and everlasting. So what does God do? Verse 14, the Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. If you're falling, he is your safety net. We fall, his hands lift us up. Let him do that. Accept his help. He takes you in your current state and raises you up. Show your gratitude by participating in that lifting up. And where does everything that you need come from? Verses 15, 16, and 19. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He knows our needs and provides. He gives us our daily bread. Christ made this clear. He told us to pray for God to give us our daily bread and also to ask and you shall receive. What we need is provided in the world that he created. And when our needs are no longer met by this world, he will take us to his. In times of trouble, he is your hope. Verse 19. He also hears their cry and saves them. He is our redeemer who has saved us through the sacrifice of his son. This is the greatest gift. He has saved us from our sinful nature and this sinful world and given us an eternity with him in the presence of the wonderful God that David described. There are two eventual fates, and yours is to be the church, his bride, the bride of Christ. Verse 20, the Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Preservation for those who love him. At times an earthly preservation, but with certainty for his people that you will not lose your salvation. You will always be at his side and you will be preserved for an eternity at his side. And also destruction for those who are wicked, for those who belong to Satan. Not just we, his children, who go astray, as the Hebrews often did. But those who belong to Satan, their destruction is certain. They will not be in paradise where you will safely reside without fear and separated from the wicked. Asking you shall receive, he answers your calls. Verses 18 and 19. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. 
He also hears their cries and saves them. He is near to you. He is the Holy Spirit. Call on him and he will hear and answer, but call in sincerity. He knows when you're in danger and saves you, for he is always with you. This unsearchable, unimaginable God will always answer your calls. As Christ says in Matthew 28, verse 20, Behold, I am always with you to the end of the age. So this is what God does. He upholds, he lifts up, he provides, he saves, he preserves, destroys, and he answers. We give our thanks by worshiping him. Verse 5, on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. Meditate on his splendor and his works. This requires that you separate yourself from the distractions of this world and spend time contemplating just how great he is and the wonderful things that he does for you. Verses 1, 2, 10, and 21. And bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. And all your saints shall bless you. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. You get a sense this might go on for a while? Bless him, for he has blessed you. How do you bless him? Think of a child who is a blessing to their parent by their good behavior. Verse 10. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. All of God's works are an expression of his grandeur. Each is wonderful in its own way. And as we observe and enjoy his works, we give thanks to God. Do not be silent. Verses 6, 11, 21, 7, and 1. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. I will extol you, my God and King. Speak aloud about God's awesome nature and what he does for us. Don't just speak, but pour forth and sing aloud of goodness and righteousness, extol and bless his name unceasingly. Do not be silent. Pass it on. Verses 4 and 12. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and glorious splendor of your kingdom. You have a duty to share this understanding of God with your children. Pass this down generation to generation. Keep it alive. Psalm 115. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Yes, bless the Lord now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. So what is it that we are to do? We're to meditate. Bless Him. Praise Him. Give thanks. Speak, tell, declare, extol, pour forth, sing aloud. Tell the children and tell generations. God defines all we know as good and His power exceeds our imagination. Yet he cares for us more deeply than we care for ourselves, and we can trust him. 
And we must look at what he does for us. He picks us up when we fall. He provides our needs. And through Christ, he has saved us. He preserves us from destruction and destroys our enemies to keep them from us. And he is our counselor on call 24-7 at a moment's notice. Should we not show him our gratitude by our worship and pass that worship down to generations after generation forever and ever? Praise the Lord. Meditate on his nature and his works. Bless him, praise him, give thanks to him. Let everyone hear of his glory from your lips and your pen and your keyboard. Cry out with all of your heart and pour out your soul in praise of him. Sing of his deeds and tell it to the children down through each generation. Let's praise God with the works of Psalm 145 with the additions there. Psalm 145 is the heart of a Jewish prayer, which combined with those three other verses I've given to you is the ashray, which means happy or blessed. Psalm 145 itself is alphabetical. The technical term is acrostic. Each verse in turn starts with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet in order, which makes it easier for a Hebrew to memorize. Jews are taught if they say the Asherah three times a day, they will be granted a place in the world to come. As I say it one more time, please meditate on the words in the Asherah. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Salah. Blessed are the people to whom such blessings fall. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless your name and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord.
for he has blessed us with these words. Let's pray to the Lord. Father, let us use these words in your service and share them with those who need them. And Lord, as you have provided us with a bountiful feast in the fellowship hall, bless those who have lovingly prepared it and bless the food to our nour the nourishment of our bodies and our souls. And let us convert this to energy to be used in your service and bless us to be mindful of the needs of others as we share through generations and throughout the universe the joy of knowing you. Amen. Okay. Thank you who have joined us online. We're blessed by your being here. And for those of us here, please join us downstairs for Christian fellowship, good food. And I also ask that you read Psalm 145 just one more time. That'll make a total of three times that you've heard it. And you will satisfy the Jewish requirement for the ashray for today. That if you say it, or in this case hear it three times, you will have a place in the kingdom to come. But remember that thanks to Christ, whether you do say this prayer or don't, God is with you. And God bless you. Pastor John back here again. If you are blessed by the service, let me ask you to do us a favor. Would you click on the like button below that little thumbs up? If you're listening on Sermon Audio, perhaps you can comment or even share the sermon with someone else. We'd love to hear from you. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at WBFVA. We're on the World Wide Web at WBFVA.org. Let us know if you'd like us to pray for you. If you'd like to support us financially, you can make donations through our website at wbfva.org. Just click on giving. You'll receive a tax deductible receipt at the end of the year. Either way, we would love to hear from you or even have you visit us in person one Sunday. We meet at 46 Winchester Street in downtown Warrington, Virginia at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. And now, may God bless you richly until we gather again.